In this video I'm going to walk through the clutch replacement on my 2018 440i. This should be a similar process if not the same for other like 2, 3, 4 series BMWs. Um, and my car is a rear wheel drive model so if you have an all wheel drive one there will be a little bit more work to do. You'll have to work around the front axles and the transfer case. But for a rear wheel drive car the concept is pretty simple. You're going to remove the underbody panels remove the cat back, remove the exhaust heat shield, and then get the drive shaft out of the way. And after that, you're pretty much ready to pull the transmission. So I'm going to walk you through that process and just kind of show you what to expect. Don't think this will be like a super intensive DIY. I'm not going to show every single bolt being removed, but I will show you, you know, what you're going to see when you get under the car. So the first thing that I've done, you can see I've jacked up the car as high as I can go. Try to get it at least, you know, two to three feet in the air so you have room to work. And then I've opened up the trunk and removed the negative terminal on the battery because under the car you will have a couple connections to remove. So just pull that off so you don't have any electrical issues in the future. So we're under the car. I've jacked it up as high as I can on all four corners. Try to get it at least two or three feet in the air so you have space to work. Um, and then you're going to begin removing the under trays. So I re removed the front one already, and then you're going to want to remove this middle one as well. It's a bunch of 8mm and 10mm screws. And then if you have a 4 Series and maybe other models, I know for sure it's on the coupes and I think the convertibles, you'll have this reinforcement plate. So you have to remove that. And basically what you're doing is getting everything out of the way to remove the catback exhaust. These bolts... These six bolts on the main bracket are T50s. The ones in the very back, there's one there, and one all the way back there, those are T60s. So I was only able to actually get that in a half inch drive, so you'll need like an adapter if you're using a regular 3 8 inch socket wrench, or like a big half inch drive breaker bar to get it off. Now all of the bracing and underbody trays are removed. The exhaust is completely exposed and ready to come down. I have a stock mid pipe and a custom muffler delete. So whatever your exhaust setup is, you know, kind of follow that process for removal. For me, I'm going to remove the two hangers by the exhaust tips so this whole thing will hang down. And then come back up front and remove the screw from this bracket that attaches it to the transmission. And then remove the exhaust clamp and slide it back and take it off and we'll be ready for the next step. Here we have the exhaust completely removed. So next you want to remove this heat shield that's covering your drive shaft. You have a bunch of these 10 millimeter bolts or fasteners and then you have these 10 mils like this and then you have one random 13 millimeter bolt. So remove all those and then pull the heat shield down. So here we have the heat shields completely removed. You see we have complete access to the drive shaft. What we're going to need to do is remove these 18 millimeter bolts, pull the drive shaft off of the trans, and then these two half inch bolts to lower the center support and fully get the drive shaft out of the way. Um, two things to note. So first of all, these bolts have 18 millimeter nuts on the back that you'll need to counter hold to actually get the bolts out. And because of the way that our transmission mount is set up, there's no way to get like a straight shot with a box wrench or something to hold those nuts. So what I'm doing is using a flexible head socket wrench with an 18 millimeter socket. And I just feed it back there, put it on the nut, and then use another socket wrench to remove the actual bolt. So all this does is just counter hold the nut, and then I can spin the dry shaft to access the other bolts as I need to. The other thing is that you will need to hold the drive shaft out of the way. So I've threaded zip ties through this sheet metal. You can see there's like kind of a slot where it's uh, seam welded to the body and then a little hole at the bottom that I fed the zip tie through. So I'm actually going to feed another one I'll show you. This is the hole and all I'm doing is Feeding it straight through, straight down, until it comes.
things out of the hole. There we go. And so these can actually hold the drive shaft against the side of the um, exhaust tunnel and just keep it out of the way. So I've pulled the drive shaft off of the transmission now and there are a lot of little steps that you need to do before you can actually lower the transmission. You can see all the electrical connections and stuff that need to be disconnected for like the starter and the ground strap. So kind of work your way around it, <clears throat> remove the slave cylinder, all of the electrical connections. I'm probably going to remove some of these extra brackets as well. I won't walk you through it bit by bit, but basically anything that's attached to the transmission or in the way of the transmission coming off, you'll want to remove. Then we're going to lower it a little bit, begin taking off some of the uh, gear stuff on top. So first thing to do is to take off everything that you see on the bottom and on the sides to give you a little more room to lower the trans. It's so one thing I did want to mention. I removed the power wire from the starter and it's held in place by this bracket and this bracket needs to be removed in order to pull the transmission and if you look all the way up there there are two nuts that need to be moved out of the way those kind of brass nuts like right there so those are actually holding the downpipe and the easiest way to access that is from the top of the car so what I did to access it, I removed the intake and it gives you a lot more room to actually get to those two nuts. Those are the two that I'm talking about. So you want to basically do that from the top of the car. If you're looking at this before you start the job, I recommend just do that first so that you're not like me getting up and down and um, trying to get those bolts off. It's just easier if you do it as a first step. Alright, so I've removed all the brackets and cables that I could find. Um, you see like the starter cable, the ground strap. I removed the clutch line from the slave cylinder. So I just kind of, like I said, removed everything that I could see that would prevent the transmission from lowering. And then I've removed the actual bracket. It's four uh, 13 millimeter screws. Remove those and then slowly lower it. It's sitting on a jack right now. But it's actually, it could just hang. This is as low as it'll go right now um, since it's fighting the motor mounts. So I'm just keeping a jack under it for safety. So the next thing you want to do is remove this clutch system that connects it to your actual shifter. And the first thing is to remove this clip. I know a lot of people have trouble with it. And what I did was just kind of squeeze my screwdriver in here. And you see like this little cut in, that's a retention feature. Let me see if I can zoom in. There we go. So you can see like there's, ugh, it's kind of like digging into here. And so what you want to do is put your screwdriver underneath and twist. And it'll pop out. So it's just kind of like hooking it on this cutout right here. So you squeeze your screwdriver under and twist, and then it'll pop out and swing out of the way. I'm going to show you guys one other clip I forgot about, of course. Yeah, so this clip right here on this pin also has a retention feature on the top that you'll need to twist the clip to pop it out. You can kind of see how it hooks underneath the pin. So you'll want to squeeze your screwdriver in the top to pop it out, and then the back half just slide straight down. So stick your screwdriver in the top, twist, and then slide it down. So I just wanted to demonstrate this again. I know there's a lot of confusion about the clips. Um, so this is what it looks like. And you can see the little tab that's bent in to snap onto the transmission. So it's like pushed into your shifter assembly. And you're going to flip it up and then pull this pin out. And there's two. There's one like this, and then there's one that's like a mirror image on the other side. So you'll twist it up and slide the pin out. And then you can actually move the shifter assembly completely free of the trans. Alright, so we got the transmission out. As expected, it was a complete headache, but um, got it done. I found that using the jack 
was actually more of a hassle, so now it's just off to the side. I basically put my knees underneath the transmission mount and bench pressed the bell housing and just pulled it out and kind of slid it down my stomach onto the floor. And so that's how I was able to pull it out. <coughs> Another thing that I want to mention is this gear selector sensor on top it needs to be um, unclipped, like you need to pull the connector out. So you can find it pretty easily. It's like right where the bell housing tapers down. I wrapped my hand around it and felt around until I got my pick between the connector and the tab to push the tab out. And then I used my finger to actually push the connector off. And I'll show you how it actually works. If you've done anything else on our cars, you know how these connectors are, but they have to actually be like unclipped. So you push it like that and it pops the connector out. And then you can actually push down on the tab to release it. And then when you push it back in, it'll snap in place. And then you have to pop that tab down. So that's what you're working with under the car. If you get your pick in between here, like you can kind of feel it when it wedges in. And then just push until that tab pops out. Then it's pretty easy to actually push it off. This is my extension setup to get around the bell housing to those top bolts. And, um, I mean, obviously those are the hardest ones to get to. The transmission itself is about two and a half feet long. So all of these extensions with like an E14 at the end is about three feet long. And I can actually like pretty much get it straight and aim it right at a bolt that I would want. So the one problem I see a lot of people recommend these kind of wobble joints. And they're good for getting around corners and hard to access areas. But when you're trying to aim like that, you know, if you're holding it like this, it's basically always flopping down and it's really hard to get it right on the bolt. So instead of that, I recommend one of these wobble extensions. You see it's got like a rounded edge or a rounded tip. And when you have that as a part of your setup, it has a little bit of flexibility. You see it kind of does wobble, but it doesn't have as much looseness as like an actual wobble extension and when you get it straight on a screw if you want to lock it in place you just push it and then it doesn't wobble anymore so it's kind of got two positions to give you even more um, flexibility in how you want to use it but yeah I highly recommend I mean you see I've got a lot of them stacked up doing something similar is key to getting it around the bell housing you don't want just like three foot long extensions. Get several joints so that it has a little bit of flexibility and you'll be able to get it right on the bolt and unscrew it. All right, so these are two of the topmost bolts. And one of them almost turned today into a really bad day. As you can see, it got really chewed up for me trying to remove it. So um, I'm just going to show you guys what I did and kind of my recommendation because obviously this can go way wrong. So it's an E14 and I have one from Harbor Freight. It kind of has like a beveled edge. And it matches how these bolts are. So typically you would recommend something like that because it'll match the design of the bolt but when I put it on that's how deep it fits I also have an 11 millimeter universal socket I just got this from Home Depot you can see it has like a lot of splines to fit a lot of different bolt designs and I'll put it on here you can see how much deeper it goes and that was really my saving grace in getting this bolt off because I started spinning it on the bolt the first couple times and the first one actually came out okay but the second one is the one that's like right at the 12 o'clock position of course that's the one that gives me the most trouble and when I felt it start spinning and it felt like it was chewing through the bolt I looked for another option and that's what worked for me so I'm going to be using that 11 mil universal to get them back in just to prevent me from having any issues and I'll probably buy a replacement bolt just for my peace of mind so I don't run into this issue again because it's really chewed up. 
And if you want to be super safe and you don't want to waste any time, just go ahead and order new bolts from your dealer. Um, if you don't need them, you can return them, get your money back. But that way, you're not going to be like me, sitting around waiting for a bolt to come in. Alright, so we're back under the car looking at the clutch. And you have six pressure plate bolts. They're six millimeter Allens. Um, kind of like in a star pattern all the way around. What I do, since I don't have the tool, is I just put a screwdriver and jam it between the subframe and the teeth on the flywheel to act as a counter hold. You can of course buy the actual BMW tool, but this is the way I use to get it off and then just start removing the bolts one by one. And after that, you'll be able to pull the pressure plate off and then the clutch disc will come off afterwards. And here's a look at my stock clutch that I just pulled out. Plenty of life left. No pressure plate. A couple marks, but I mean, overall pretty good condition. What a lot of people don't realize is we have the same clutch as an E90 and 54, so... BMW has been using the same clutch since 2007 all the way up to, you know, 2019, 2020. So the torque limits are the same even though the power of the engine is increasing. But yeah, I can still feel the machine grooves a little bit. So, good condition, running just stage one, no power issues. Um, but once you start getting up to like stage two E30 pushing closer to 500 foot-pounds you'll start seeing issues so I did buy a 550i clutch this is the Luke kit um, not the OEM kit but it's a nice little upgrade for stock that does come with the throwout bearing components like you can see um, everything there I'm not replacing mine because my car only has 11,000 miles but if you are you basically remove the spring clip and slide the assembly off also, you want to grease the splines just to make sure it still moves freely. And the loop kit comes with some grease that you can apply on there. Now, the thing that the loop kit doesn't come with are pressure plate bolts. And that does come on the OEM kit. But I'm going to be reusing mine. I'm just going to put like a dot of red Loctite on each one before it goes in. And that will prevent it from backing out. And now we're back under the car, ready to put the clutch back together. Um, the first thing you want to do is wipe off your flywheel. So I have brake clean on a shop rag. And you just kind of wipe it. To get all the dust and grime off. And then wipe it with the dry side. So now you're going to put on the clutch disc itself. Um, it is directional, so make sure you look for this G word. It basically means gearbox in German. Um, so that's the side that sticks out towards the transmission. And then you put the clutch alignment tool in to hold it in place and keep it centered. So something I forgot about is that the pressure plate has like this piece in the middle. And I'm pretty sure it's just to hold all the fingers down on the pressure plate because if they're sticking out it could probably get damaged in shipping so um, you can't actually install the pressure plate with the clutch alignment tool installed it doesn't fit because you have this <laughs> whole piece in the middle so I'm going to pop it out right now basically I've just put it in place and snugged up the six bolts that I put Loctite on I just kind of snugged them up so it'll at least stay in place and I have a 14 millimeter Allen I'm going to put in here and then twist it off and um, reinstall the clutch alignment tool to actually get the clutch this centered before I torque down the pressure plate. Alright, and here's everything put together. As you can see, the alignment tool sticks out even past the fingers after I removed that center stop. So. You definitely have to remove it before installing the pressure plate. Um, 
this is the alignment tool that came with the kit so it probably wouldn't hurt to buy the one specific for your car for in this case I have a 2018 440i so there's a tool number that I can look up that's specific for my car and it might be able to be installed with that piece but it's kinda not likely so this still works pretty much the same and here's everything done I torqued down all the pressure plate bolts to 15 newton meters or um, it was like 11 foot pounds and um, I gave it like a little extra probably like 90 degrees just to um, help make sure that it stays in there it's not really a lot of torque but the thread locker will help keep it in place so I put the pressure plates on or the pressure plate bolts on and then pulled out the alignment tool and everything's ready to go back in basically the reverse of removal the only thing I'm concerned about with getting the trans in is this is the wire that connects to the gear selector I'm not really sure the best way to keep access to it but for now I'm just making sure that it's like completely out of the way so that um, reinstalling the transmission doesn't pinch the wire and then we'll figure out a way to fish it up there and actually plug it back in but um, you know there's not a lot of room up there to begin with so we'll see how that goes and just for everyone's reference I wanted to show kinda how the bolts go in um, I just kept them like in this shape so that I could remember where they all went but basically along the bottom you have three small E10s and then on the sides and like coming around the left towards the top you have long E14s and then you have two shorter E14s at like 12 o'clock and 1.30 um, so it's pretty easy to remember since we only have three different styles the E14s go around the tops and the sides and then the three small ones go on the bottom just remember that these two are shorter than the other E14s alright so I have successfully gotten the transmission back in place what I actually did um, well we'll start off in saying so I put that block of wood underneath the oil pan between the oil pan and the subframe to keep it from leaning too far forward after I removed the transmission and of course it did anyway so I ended up using the jack to jack up the engine so that it would tilt backwards and then I just installed the transmission without a jack obviously if you have two people or an extra jack it might be easier for me it was kinda of getting in the way since I'm like underneath the car bench pressing it so getting the jack out of the way actually made it easier for me and once I got it in I installed this lower E10 bolt just to kinda of get it started um, I couldn't get the trans completely flush so I had to kinda of drive the bolts in to pull the transmission into the engine I know that's not the right way to do it but I know that's also how 99% of people will do it so if you get it in and it just drops in great if not you'll have to follow that method but I started with this bolt just to get it hung onto the engine and hold it in place I didn't get it all the way flush I just kinda of started it so that it would hold everything straight and then I installed this E14 and there's actually a dowel under here so this one is a good one to drive in to get the engine located or the transmission located to the engine and then this upper E14 also has a dowel so those two are directly across from each other which is great and they have the dowels that locate them to the engine block so once you get those in all the rest of the bolts will go in easily so start with this small one just because it's right at the bottom and easy to access and then begin using um, your extensions and wobble extensions to actually get these other two bolts driven in and so what I've done now I just put in the rest of the E10s I put in this upper E14 at the top of this bracket and basically everything else is the reverse of removal also I will say I did have one casualty both of my zip ties that were holding up my dry shaft snapped while I was flailing my feet like a child so luckily I had this down here because that's what my transmission was sitting on 
And when I pulled the transmission up and I kicked one of the zip ties and both of them broke and it dropped right on there. So just be careful with that too. If you have a more secure way to hold it up, it wouldn't be a bad idea. But um, for me, it just worked out. All right, so at this point, um, the installation is basically just the reverse of removal. You're going to go ahead and remove the jack with the transmission lower down, put in the top bolts. Um, there is like an actual tightening sequence, and I'll put in the description a link to like the BMW instructions for how to do this. It has all the torque specs, but they're um, 66 newton meters, and there is like a pattern where you start with two of the top bolts and then move down to the bottom and work your way around and kind of crisscross. Um, so try to make sure you follow that to the best of your ability. And then reassemble the shift linkage stuff, jack it back up, reattach the transmission mount, and you know just reinstall all the brackets and wires and stuff. And then you'll put your drive shaft and exhaust and the under panels back on. Um, so I'm not going to film all that. I'm kind of just ready to get this done. But a couple things to remember, obviously if you removed your clutch line like I did, make sure you bleed your slave cylinder really well. And then after you drop it down, reattach your battery and you're ready to go, don't forget to do your break-in miles. I'm going to do a tank of gas, so usually that's 300 to 350 miles. Um, so make sure you do that full break-in period. In this case, driving in the city and doing stop and go is a lot better than just cruising on the highway. So. If you can drive around town at least for the first 50 to 100 miles, <clears throat> then you'll be able to really properly bed in the new pressure plate and clutch disc with your old flywheel. And you really want to do that because if you're doing this like me where it's an upgrade, you want to be able to get the maximum surface area possible so you can hold as much torque as possible. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this helps somebody out. Um, shout out to everybody that does YouTube for a living because this really sucks trying <laughs> to do this at the same time as doing like a big job like this. But, um, you know, I feel like a lot of people think you can't work on these cars. So hopefully this just helps show that it's just like anything else, you know, a couple extra sensors and stuff. But overall, it's a car that anybody can work on. And I'm sure in the future, more people will be trying to DIY at home. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below.